Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to take a look at the Miro transaction in SAP S4 HANA. You can see I'm logged on here into the SAP S4 HANA GUI system and we will type in MIRO and hit on enter. This is the transaction code to post incoming invoices as you can see over here. Please be aware that this transaction code is existing in SAP S4 HANA GUI or we can also emulate it to use it in S4 HANA Fiori but this only counts for a private cloud system. In the public cloud systems, there is an Fiori equivalent application to this, which I explained to you already in another video of mine. I will leave you the link in the description of this one. Now let's look at the detailed screen we can see over here. First of all, you can see some buttons. Show PO structure. You can see an information message popped up saying that the only periods where we can post values to as of now are the last period of the fiscal year, which is still not closed as well as the former period and also the last period of the year before this year. So only three periods are opened. This is because of the restrictions in materials management. So far so good. We will select here continue and then you can see here now a kind of split structure opened. However, there is nothing to be displayed as of now. This is just because we did not select yet a purchase order. So for now I will close it again. Next off you can see here a button called show work list. Let's select this one. The work list would show all the documents we held or also parked, as well as documents which are ready for posting. And this work list here is actually specific for your user. So if you parked or hold certain documents, then they will be shown over here and you could select them. For now, we will hide it as well. Next off, we have here a button called other invoice document. So we can actually navigate to an existing document by clicking here and then inserting the invoice document number as well as the fiscal year. Let's close this. We have a button called help and this will actually provide us some more information here on the left hand side for this transaction. So you could actually click here for instance on PO structure and then it will show more information about the PO structure in this case. Let's close this for now. There's one more button called NF raw material charging which is relevant for Brazil and that's basically it. Now you can see over here we can select a transaction. So actually with this Miro transaction we can post invoices, credit memos or also subsequent debits or subsequent credits. An invoice would be an invoice we received from our supplier. A credit memo would be a credit that we received from our supplier. So it actually reduces our accounts payables. A subsequent debit would be used if we want to subsequently debit other costs to our invoice that we already created. So meaning that let's imagine we already received an invoice from our vendor for the total quantity of goods delivered and subsequently, so afterwards, we want to include freight costs even though the invoice quantity itself remains the same. And in this case we would use here a subsequent debit. This also counts for the subsequent credit so meaning that if we have received a credit memo from our vendor for the total quantity of goods that were delivered and subsequently freight costs still need to be credited to us, then we would use here a subsequent credit. So far so good. Now let's talk here about the header details. In the basic data section you can see we need to provide an invoice date, which is normally the date stated on the invoice we received from our supplier. Let me just insert a date over here. Then we need to define the posting date, so the date where the financial data is actually posted into our system. We will provide a reference, so the number stated on the invoice you receive. Let's just say 1 million for now. Then we must include the amount. So this is the total amount. We will fill it later on because normally this is derived from the line items. And here you could include the document currency. Then it's always advisable to select here the calculate tax indicator so that the tax is calculated automatically by the system. We could also state here the tax amount manually if necessary. And we will also provide a tax code for our financial transaction. Then there is a text field over here. You can see there's actually a value help. So we could fill here some of those pre-shipped texts or even create own ones via the customizing or even just state some free text over here. This would also work. Please be aware that the text stated over here can be used internally or externally. So internally would mean that it's only used for us and our colleagues and externally would mean that it is actually printed on correspondences, on dining notices, payment advices and so on. If the latter one is the case, then you must state here an asterisk like that. And then this word over here will be printed on correspondence letters. For now we will leave it as is. Next off over here you can see that right now this document is not finished, it's incorrect and we have a balance of zero. 
This will change in a second. Let's look at the other header sections. First of all, payments. You can see here we can include lots of payment information, such as the baseline date, which is used for our cash discounts, and also depends here on the payment terms, which are used to define our payment periods as well as the cash discounts then. And normally all of this is derived from the purchase order. We will see that in a second. We can see a field called CD where we could actually enter the cash discount. So the real amount if needed, but this we would only fill if on the vendor invoice, the cash discount is stated as an amount and not as a percentage value, so to say. Otherwise, we can calculate the cash discount automatically here via the payment terms. Next off, you can see here also an indicator called fixed. And let me actually open the value help here. You can see here not fixed would be the default value or we can fix the first cash discount or even the second one. So this would mean that we could force the system to apply a cash discount, even though maybe the period for applying the cash discounts has already been passed. Okay, let's go a bit further down. We can see that we can set your payment method. So if we enter a payment method, then only this payment method could be used during our automatic payment run. By the way, I have a whole playlist about the automatic payment run. I will leave you the link in the description of this video. So make sure to check it out afterwards. For now, we will leave it free. Then we have here the block for payment indicator. So we can actually post this invoice and then block it for payment due to various reasons. We have the partner bank type, which is particularly important if we have a business partner for whom we stored multiple bank accounts. In this case, via the partner bank indicator, we could state to which of those bank accounts we want to transfer the money to. And we can even specify over here the house bank information, meaning that with which bank we want to pay our vendor. Then there is a payment reference free text field. And this field here is actually used in certain countries. So for instance, in Finland, in Norway, in Sweden, where we would fill this field with a certain number or even a certain text. And then once we conduct the payment run, this information will be forwarded to the relevant financial institute and from there to our vendor. And the vendor himself can use this information to determine which items on the invoice have been paid for. Okay. Then we have here the payment reason. So here we could provide a reason why the payment is made. Let's now go to the details tab. We must include at least the document type. So this will decide amongst others about the number that invoice will be posted with. Then we have here the invoicing party. If we state here deviating party, then this invoicing party will be used in our payment run. We have the assignment field, which can actually be used to sort our line items for this invoice according to the context of this field. But normally this here is filled automatically out of the master data. So actually this means that in the master data, there is the so-called sort key field, and this will decide how the invoice is sorted. Then we have the SCB indicator, which is only used in certain countries like Germany. And the meaning of this can differ actually. So in Germany, for instance, if we have transactions with foreign business partners that exceed a certain amount of 12,500 euro, then the Germans must state here an SCB indicator. However, in other countries like Austria, Belgium, the Netherlands or Japan, it could mean something else. I recommend you to open the search help via the F1 on your keyboard, or it could also be Fn plus F1. Then you will see this information here. Then you can see here one more field called supply C slash R, which is also used only in Germany and will contain the country or region key of the purchasing country in the case of imports or also transits. And this information in Germany is actually required along with this SCB indicator to satisfy the German foreign trade reporting requirements. There is another indicator called service indicator, and this field could be filled with an external service code, but is only used in Austria. The other indicators are grayed out as you can see. There's one more called collective invoices, but this is a special topic. Then we have here text section where we can see all the text information again, such as the text code and also if there's a debit or credit. And if we scroll here to the right hand side, we can see the tax reporting date, which is quite important as this is the date on which the tax must be reported to the tax authorities. The tax fulfillment date indicates the date on which the tax becomes chargeable. And this is only used in certain countries. Furthermore, you can see here the calculate tax button again, and also the possibility to calculate the tax amounts as a net value 
or delete some rows. We have a contact section where our user is stated and a note section where we could provide more information. For now, let's go back to the basic data and let's actually scroll down a bit because over here we can either fill now the invoice information with reference to a purchase order or we could state that our counter account we are posting to is a GL account. In most of the cases, this application is used for the former one. So I will actually insert a purchase document in a second over here. And then you will see that most of the information in the line item section and also in the header section will be filled automatically. However, before we do so, you can see a drop down menu. So besides the purchase order or scheduling agreement, we can also include a delivery note, a bill of landing, service entry sheet, and so on. So there are many options. In most of the cases, this one here will be used. Now let's insert a purchase order over here. I prepared a purchase order in the background. We will hit on enter and you can see now most of the fields are populated automatically. First of all, let's scroll up a bit. As you can see, the vendor information was pulled from the business partner master, such as the name, the address information, as well as the IBAN and Swift code. Also here in the payment section, you can see that the baseline date was derived from the payment terms. And down here, the line item is being displayed. Let's actually now focus on the line item. This line item was derived from our purchase order. So we have the item ID as well as the amount and the quantity. Then you can see there is a column called OK, where we could mark the line item as posting OK, so to say. This means that we have compared here our digital item with the physical item written on our invoice. But this is just an informative field, so to say. So you are not obliged to fill this. Then we have the purchase order number and we can actually double click on this. So we are directly forwarded to the respective purchase order. Let's go back and down a bit. Then we have here the purchase order text. So this is all derived from the purchase order as well as the text code quite importantly. So as you can see, it's V1 over here. So I will insert on the basic data in the header section V1 as well. Right now it's already set as default. Let me scroll down again and a bit to the right. Please be aware that you could have here one or even multiple line items and those line items could consist of different text codes. This would work. However, in this column, at least one of the text codes must also appear over here in the header section. Otherwise you will get an error message. So far so good. Let's scroll a bit more to the right and focus on some more important columns like the no discount where we could exclude certain line items from the discount. This discount was set over here in the payment section via the payment terms. So this means that if a discount in general applies due to the payment terms, we could still exclude certain line items from the discount by selecting the respective button you can see here. Okay, then we have here an account assignment category and an account assignment itself, but this also depends on the purchase order and is derived from there. As you can see, there are different objects relevant to finance, such as the GL account, as well as some cost objects like the cost center, WBS element, the internal order and so on. Let's go further to the right. You can see there are many more different cost objects that could be filled. And some of those fields over here like grant and so on, they are just active if we are interacting with certain modules from SAP. We can also see here the order unit quite importantly, and also the order quantity. So this is quite important to notice if you compare the purchase order as well as the goods received with the invoice received. Further to the right, we can also see the net PO value and the net price. So in this case, we have a net price of one, we have 100 units, so the net PO value is 100. If we scroll even further to the right, you will see the material for the line item as well as more material information like the material group plant and valuation area. Let's go further to the right. Here we would also have the option to mark this line item as a subsequent debit or credit. This I explained to you before. We can see over here the delivery date. And then there are some more fields which are like special topics, so to say. Please be aware that you could change the layout via this button. So the layout means the columns being displayed over here as well. If you have lots of line items, you could also search for the line item via this button also via this free text field, so to say. Right now, the invoice is still erroneous because as you can see, the balance is 100. This is why I advise you to always just check the line items first. And you know by now that the line item has a value of 100. Also, you can see it over here. So this is why we need to insert the 100 here in the basic data section under the amount. 
like that. If we scroll up again, you can see the balance is now green. That's basically it. Now you could post the document and then the invoice will be generated. You can see I have one more error here because I did not calculate the tax. Let me just hit on enter and calculate tax and must increase the balance to 119 as tax is included. The balance is green, so now we can post. And you can see the document was created successfully. I hope you gained good knowledge and liked this video. If so, then please subscribe to the channel and activate the bell. Also make sure to subscribe to my Patreon, where I post lots of free configuration documents. The link is in the description of my channel. Thanks a lot and see you next time.